I haven't told many people about this, but I've been filming a music documentary all over the world. <laughs> so far, we've been to a few places in the US. We've been to Spain, Bosnia, Croatia, Italy, Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. In a week, I'm going back to Spain, and then we're going to some distant countries like Indonesia and Japan in 2024. Whew. So, what are we filming, and who's the we? <laughs> well, it's me and Leonardo Pavkovich. And Leonardo is the founder of Moonjoon Records, one of the most interesting and internationally renowned record labels I've ever come across. He's released music from Stickmen, Soft Machine, Alan Holdsworth, and a few other big names in the prog world, but also from wonderful artists you've probably never heard of, people like Vasco Atanasovsky from Slovenia, and Dewa Bujana from Indonesia, and Boris Savaldeli from Italy. Uh, so it's really cool stuff. But like, how did all this happen? <laughs> okay, in January 2022, Leonardo surprised me with a day-long visit to Phoenix, where I live. My wife made a nice dinner, and afterward, he and I sat in my living room to talk for a little bit. And he told me he was doing this Moonjoon Music Festival in his hometown in Bosnia. He was also getting encouraged to write a book about his life and perhaps film a documentary. Well, he'd already started working on the book with Moonjoonista Dennis Ray, and then he asked me to film his travels around the world for the documentary, which included his activities with Moonjoon Music, his booking uh, agency, his record label, Moonjoon Records, and the festival. It sounded interesting, and I encouraged him to do it, and then he's like, you know what, why don't you just come to Bosnia for the festival? And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, that sounds fun. You know, I didn't think much of it. Uh, but I also had no idea before that day that Leonardo had visited over 90 countries, been to Japan over more than 50 times, spoke half a dozen languages, and I didn't know he was, like, serious about doing all of this stuff. Until about two weeks later when I had an itinerary to travel with him across Europe, and then I had plane tickets, and then I had to buy all this new camera gear. <laughs> so since then, we've spent a lot of time together. I've traveled with him almost as much as I've traveled with my wife of almost 20 years. And it's been amazing. We're, we're about to do another festival this year. Next weekend, uh, I fly out to Spain for it. And it's the 2023 uh, Moon June Music Festival. It's happening at the end of September in Toledo, Spain, which is a beautiful historic town where Leonardo lives. And in addition to being behind the cameras, I'll also be performing music, doing a talk about my book, Failure to Fracture, and then moderating a discussion about music in a post-COVID world, featuring Derek Shulman of Gentle Giant, Bill Hine of Ryko Records and Live Nation, Sid Smith from Prague Magazine, Adam Baruch of Jazz's Records, Marcus Reuter, and Leonardo. <laughs> you can learn all about the festival at moonjuntoledo.com, but here are some of the highlights. There's gonna be performances by Soft Machine, Anchor and Burden, Dwiki Darmawan with Dewa Bujana, Beledo, and an array of amazing Spanish artists like Diego Amador, Amos Lora, Fernando Giron, Jaco Abel, and Ana Alcaide. Now what excites me the most is that day three is focused entirely on flamenco and then day four on international music. At the 2022 festival in Bosnia, there were like 18 musicians from a dozen countries, including Siberia and Tuva and Israel and Indonesia. And at this upcoming festival, there's gonna be people from four different continents. <laughs> Leonardo just wants to bring people together through music and joy uh, during a time where the, you know, the world is kind of crazy. Uh, so what I love about Leonardo is he's all about great food, amazing drinks, great music, deep relationships, and incredible scenery, all of which you will find at the festival in Toledo. All right, so up next is an interview with Leonardo, uh, and we're gonna talk about the festival. And you can just go to moonjuntoledo.com if you wanna you know, find out all the details, but Leonardo and I go in depth on the whole schedule. Uh, the festival's very affordable, especially considering it's four nights of live music with a whole bunch of bands. Uh, and these panel discussions and cool stuff during the day and at night. Uh, it actually costs less than one ticket to see Peter Gabriel, who's on tour right now. So uh, really affordable. And uh, if you've never been to Toledo, Spain, it's super unique city with a ton to see and do. So I hope to see you there. It should be awesome. And if you do show up, you know, and you see me and I'm not like crazy busy doing something, please say hi. I'd love to talk to you. All right, here comes the chat with Leonardo. And there's a lot happening in Toledo, Spain uh, at the end of the month and leading into October. So Leonardo, kick it off. Tell us what's going on in your world and tell us about this festival. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of things uh, what is going on. Uh, and 
the great thing like that my company is called Moon June, and it's not June, but it's actually full moon. Uh, 29th of September is the full moon in Toledo. <laughs> it's kind of coinciding. It's kind of uh, symbolic. It's always about moon. And normally, when the, uh, there is a full moon, the weather is amazing. Uh, very rarely, like I just saw, like uh, statistic in the last hundred years, very rarely, uh, almost never rained on during the September's full moon. And uh, what is happening? There are four days of the festival. We are starting on uh, October on September 28th. We have uh, like an opening party in a very nice terrace overlooking uh, outside of Toledo. We are in the uh, old town and we will have opening party with uh, some kind of authorities from the from the city, from the region, some local celebrities are sponsors and whoever is in town for the festival will have a VIP session and we will have uh, you as a musician playing that night because I was th uh, say, uh, thinking, okay, you're a great musician. You will be there like, you know, doing other things, filming and, you know, uh, you know, presenting your book, but, you know, why not to play? Like, even if it's opening party, it will be nice. It's uh, it's open air. It's a nice breeze. You know, temperature will be perfect and we'll have nice thing and you can definitely do some great music. And then, uh, the next day, uh, first day of the real festival, we are moving to a, a place that used to be a church of Inquisition, San Vicente. It's not church since uh, 1854, I believe. In the last 30 years, is a, a cultural center. And it's uh, beautiful inside. And uh, my uh, associate, my partner in crime, Mauricio Daginaco, he is uh, coming from a movie industry. And he's designing uh, uh, the whole set, which means when you enter in that kind of magic space, like this kind of a gothic church from uh, almost 900, which is 900 years old, it was completely renovated uh, for this uh, 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 art center about 25, 30 years ago. You will enter into the Moonjun world. You will have a, you will have a sort of experience because this is our uh, uh, one of the our uh, goals like uh, why why only listening to the music uh, why do not have experience because uh, I believe that uh, Moon June World is uh, it's also experience because of the kind of music that I'm presenting kind of artists that I'm uh, representing and then uh, in that space we will have a uh, couple of activities during the mornings late mornings between 11 and uh, 12.45, 1 o'clock, we'll have a so-called roundtable seminars. And that particular day, we will start with a seminar on uh, current situation in the music business uh, in this post-COVID world, because I believe uh, many things ha has cha have changed in the, uh, recent years. The world has changed. And I think uh, there is a wake-up call also in music industry. And uh, I invited a couple of very dear friends of mine who happen to be a couple of uh, among the most uh, experienced and successful music business impresarios in the United States, probably in the last 50 years. One is one of my be really best friends, Derek Schul Schulman, very well known for uh, being a, a leader and frontman of Gentle Giant, one of my favorite bands, also one of your favorite bands. But uh, since 1981, he went to the other side of the business. He became a record executive. And uh, definitely on this panel, he can uh, uh, present his um, uh, expertise uh, as a touring musician for uh, with a couple of bands, one in the late 60s, one in during the 70s as an active musician, and then one uh, during his very successful almost four decades career as a music uh, business executive. And then the second uh, special guest will be my good friend for 20 plus years, Bill Hine, he used to run Enigma Restless Records in the 80s, in 90s. And uh, I met him in uh, 2002, and he's a very important person to me, and we became very close friends because he actually helped me in the beginning with Softworks. When I was looking uh, for a record deal in USA for Softworks, a friend of mine in Los Angeles introduced me to Bill Hine because he had 
all those famous Alan Holtzworth albums on his label, I think, in the 80s. But then, because he was uh, going on uh, to a transition, he was moving to New York to run Raiko Disc, he suggested another label. But then, because he came to New York to run the Raiko Disc, Kind of he, because he liked me, I like him, and we we just started hanging out because Raiko office was just a, around the corner from my office, and then uh, we always kept in touch, and uh, and because he's my friend of mine, and uh, he already came to Toledo, and I said, look, you know, Bill, would you like to come? He said, yeah, I would like to come to your festival. Also, he's my new distributor. He has a new company, uh, Flat Iron uh, Record uh, Recordings Company. And uh, between him and uh, Derek Schumann, we can have a really kind of nice uh, uh, kind of uh, couple of people that they really can tell us what is going on in, in the music industry, what was yesterday, what is today, and where eventually music business is moving to in the in the in the future. Then we'll have a couple of other people. I will intervene also a little bit because I'm not only independent record label, I'm also independent booking agency. That will be my, uh, 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 you know, uh, from that angle. We have Markus Reuter, who is a touring musician right now. He's playing everywhere in the world with Stickman and with a couple of other bands. Then I will have uh, my good friend Bradley Stone, one of the top jazz guys and also pro guys in USA. And I will have Adam Baruch, a friend of mine also uh, from Israel, who used to run several festivals, who was a music uh, Concerts promoter also ran several labels, and he's a record uh, uh, collector, and also he is a record reviewer. And idea of these roundtables is like because we don't want to have just uh, music to be played. We would like to have this kind of educational kind of thing to to show to people with uh, like with what we know about music right now, how the music has changed because. I, I was uh, in this business for 25 years almost. But a couple of other people, they were there like for 40 or 50 or 60 years. And we have kind of uh, different uh, points of view. And we know uh, uh, we are sensing where the music business is going after this very difficult period in, in our history, in you know in recent years, like which is pandemic. And I think it's really interesting. Then during the afternoon, we'll have a book presentation and uh, you are there like to present your book also on um, how you led that famous Robert Fripp's tune for uh, 20 something years. Then, you know, this is something that we would like to develop, uh, not just making concerts, but, you know, just to make it interesting. Then in the evening, we will have concerts. And uh, uh, every night, we'll have three bands. Uh, the first night, uh, the opening band will be. Um, will be Fernando Giron band. Fernando is a, a very experienced session player here in Spain, uh, but he's also a fusion guy. Uh, he was learning guitar from Scott Henderson and Mike Stern. And um, he has a, a jazz rock fusion band. Then I have uh, Anchor in Burden, which is a band of uh, Markus Reuter with Alexander Doverk, Ale Bernard Westheinrich, and Asaf Sirkis, which is kind of... Uh, very kind of uh, ultra modern, progressive, uh, improvisational kind of uh, avant band. Then we have a legendary sock machine, and uh, that will be the first day of the of the of the of the of the of the program of the festival. And then, uh, then on second day, we are continuing with this kind of open uh, kind of uh, uh, like roundtables, like seminars. And uh, the theme of the Saturday will be flamenco. Flamenco is a uh, you know, uh, genre or subgenre of uh, of music here in Spain uh, that was generated in uh, Andalusia, in the southern part of the country, very popular around the world, popular by uh, great players like Camarón de la Isla, singer, and Paco de Lucia. And uh, will be also kind of uh, what flamenco was yesterday, what is today, and where flamenco world will be, uh, where we'll be going in the future. And this is kind of. Uh, little introduction for something that I am kind of semi-announcing that in 2024, I will uh, uh, create another sub-label of uh, Moonjun will be called Tokyo Records, which will be ex uh, specifically dedicated to um, flamenco and beyond. It will be not maybe pure flamenco, but flamenco that, that meets jazz, improvisation, blues, progressive rock, 
and um, and then uh, that evening uh, we will have uh, uh, three uh, different exponents of uh, modern flamenco. The first band is Haco Abel, a flamenco electrico trio. Haco is very experienced. Uh, guitar player, one of the very few uh, electric guitar players that plays uh, electric guitar the same way that uh, flamenco guitar is played, that kind of technique. Not very, uh, not so many uh, uh, guitar players are playing that kind of uh, style. And it's a kind of power, uh, kind of uh, sort of fusion trio, but very flamenco influenced with the incredible uh, bass player uh, Julian Heredia, which uh, is considered one of the greatest bass player here in Spain. And then uh, he has also percussionist, drummer. And then the second band will be a very young and extremely talented guitar player from Salamanca called Amos Lora with his five-piece band, which is composed by three Spanish musicians and two Cuban musicians. And he also played flamenco guitar since the age of six or seven. He was a child prodigy. And uh, he, when uh, Paco de Lucia was alive, he uh, he said that he's uh, virtually like next Paco in the uh, He's appreciated by many uh, top players, including Aldi Miola, Tomatito, and Paco. And his, uh, his band is um, he's playing flamenco guitar, but also electric guitar. And because of the two uh, Cuban uh, musicians, his music is kind of... Uh, he's very much influenced by Pat Metini, uh, a little bit by Al Holzo, but mostly Pat Metini and Paco de Lucia, of course. And the music is kind of blend of uh, flamenco, jazz, fusion, and Afro-Caribbean rhythms. And then at the end, uh, I have a, a, another friend of mine who is one of the most uh, no, best known musicians here in Spain, Diego Amador. He belongs to the so-called Clan Amador because they're a big family, Gitana family from Sevilla. His older brothers, one died several years ago, and uh, Re, uh, Rafael and Raimundo Amador, they were um, uh, members of the, one of the most famous bands of all times here in Spain called Pata Negra. They revolutionized flamenco, mixing it with blues and rock. Kind of uh, imagine like kind of a Jimi Hendrix mix, Paco de Lucia, something like that. And, uh, and then, but he's playing uh, on piano, acoustic piano with uh, Paco de Lucia's nephew, Jose Maria Bandera. And it's sort of flamenco, but there is a lot of jazz because they are reinterpreting Paco de Lucia songs. Uh, and it's called Paqueando, which means, uh, you know, making the things of Paco, Paqueando. And that's the second night. And then the third, last night, it's very interesting, very intense. And that's in the uh, morning. Sunday, October 1st. For that's anyone, Sunday, you know. Sunday, October 1st. <laughs> in the morning, we have uh, also round tables, which will be, it will be kind of more poetic because we we're talking about music from the world that unifies and unites the world. Because Dwiki Darmaman, who is you know, a good friend of mine that you met in Yaitse last year, he, for 30 years, he has this kind of project that he's the only fixed member called the World Peace Band or World Peace Orchestra. And uh, he believes in, uh, in uh, you know, you know, in, in this kind of uh, integration of all races and ethnicities, you know, doesn't matter who is coming from, but and the world is uh, very divided today. And this is kind of a, a romantic uh, kind of uh, perspective of uh, all these musicians because as I always say, like, you know, if we go on the table to eat, then we play some music and we hang out together. We will not have time to, uh, uh, you know, hate each other or to make wars, you know. And I believe that art, spe specifically music, it's very important. And what's interesting, like, that I have uh, on this night, that bands, uh, bands that featuring uh, musicians from virtually four continents. We are starting with Beledo, who is Uruguayan board, but lives in New York City with his old friend from Uruguay who lives in Spain, Pato Munoz on bass, Ofer Asaf on sax, who is from Israel, and Xavi Reja from uh, Spain, who is on drums, and Dominique Vanton on piano, because Beledo plays piano and uh, guitar, and when he plays guitar, then his uh, piano parts that are in albums can be played by Dominique Vanton from Belgium. Then second artist will be Ana Alcaide. She's from Madrid, but she lives in Toledo. And uh, uh, she will be performing with her American husband, Bill Cooley. And she's one of two most prominent uh, exponents of uh, uh, Spanish medieval and Sephardic music, music of, uh, of uh, Sephard Sephardic Jews that lived in, uh, in the Iberian Peninsula until 1492. 
and but it's very modern kind of uh, of old music uh, because uh, she has also influences from uh, you know from Persia, from uh, Northern Africa, Middle East, uh, Balkans, uh, Sweden, and her husband is uh, American. He is playing uh, oud, and she is singing, playing violin, and one very uh, unique instrument called the nickel harp. And uh, after that, uh, uh, we have a, a little ceremony. I am uh, actually, because I like to, uh, you know, I'm very a uh, guy who likes to thank people, you know, and I like to thank a couple of people that they were very important in my life. And I invented this kind of uh, Munjun Awards, Munjun de, de Toledo Awards, like a recognition. Uh, uh, I will uh, award two musicians and two people in the music industry. Two musicians are very dear friends of mine. Uh, one is Roy Babington, legendary uh, bass player from Soap Machine. And one is uh, uh, John Marshall, who unfortunately is not doing well. And I really feel very sad. I spoke to Theo Travis and uh, Roy Babington a couple of days ago. And unfortunately, one of my favorite uh, drummers of all times, John Marshall, is not doing well. We, you know, we, uh, Unfortunately, that's the sign of the time. But because soft machine is very important thing in my life, and I started softworks, and we see like you know three people from softworks died, like Hugh Hopper, Elton Dean, and uh, Alan Holzwood, and a lot of friends of mine died, like P. Pyle and uh, Francesco Di Giacomo from uh, Banco, and uh, Alberto Bonomi from uh, from DFA, and John Heisman from uh, Colosseum. It's life, but because of soft machine and Moon June kind of connection, I felt that I really need to to do something, you know, to say, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, because without you, I couldn't make it, you know, and uh, I wanted to invite John Marshall, but he cannot travel. And then uh, I will, uh, and also John uh, Roy Bavito, he's actually, you met him last year, he's actually in very good shape. The only thing that he has arthritis, he cannot play. He can actually record a couple of tunes on last Soft Machine album, because he can only play for five, six minutes, then because of his arthritis, he really cannot do so much. And, uh, and then I will be doing uh, 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 like this uh, recognition awards to uh, people that I already mentioned, to Derek Schulman and to Bill Hine. It's also a sort of recognition to what I'm doing. You know, I, if, if you know, you know, yes, I did a lot of things by myself, but you know, sometimes in your life, there are certain people that they give you certain help and encouragement. And these people really did that for me. Bill Hine, 20 plus years ago, and also, I, you know, Derek Schumann for other reasons, and uh, and he's one of my favorite uh, artists, Gentle Giant. He was the frontman, and I, I I thought that this will be very nice thing. And also, I will in the future, I would like to have this kind of uh, awards in the future to award like a couple of musicians and a couple of people from music business. Then the uh, ending uh, 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 the uh, the band that will close the festival is a Dviki Dermavan Volpi's band. We have a uh, Dwiki from Indonesia, and with with two other musicians who are very well known in Indonesia. One is Deva Bujan on guitar as a special guest, and Ivan Nesterman who is singing, playing flute, and maybe acoustic guitar. We have Ofer Asaf from Israel on sax, Yaron Stavi from Israel on uh, on uh, bass, and we have uh, Israel Varela <coughs> on uh, drums. But forgetting one thing that. Uh, for a half hour before uh, Dviki starts, uh, Israel Varela will do a solo performance for about 25, 30 minutes. And maybe one of the musicians that they played the uh, day before, like maybe Diego Amador, he will just join him for a little something because Israel who lives in uh, in Rome, he lived also in Spain. He played virtually with everybody uh, known and unknown in uh, jazz and flamenco here in Spain. And it will be a very nice thing because then, because of the ceremony, we'll have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, local, you know, politicians, celebrities, and some people from a couple of embassies will come from Madrid. It's only like a half hour, a half hour by train, forty five minutes by by car, and that will be end of the festival. And uh, you know, and it's experience because also we will film everything with five or six cameras. And uh, uh, the stage and the entire room will be very well designed. You know, I, I'm I already saw a little bit what it's gonna be, but Mauricio is kind of very crazy guy in very good, very crazy. He's very uh, kind of creative, and he comes from that industry, film industry, and uh, we just want to uh, make uh, uh, amazing experience 
because people are coming from uh, uh, almost 20 countries from all around the world. It's, uh, this is amazing. Like, you know, sometimes I think like, you know, yes, people are coming to see the show, but I have to admit like a lot of, you know, virtually all these people are coming because of me. And it's, for me, it's a great pleasure because I think I did a few good things in my life. <laughs> And uh, it's very kind of uh, flattering, like, you know, that people, you know, from USA, from Indonesia, from Sweden, from Poland, Israel, Belgium, France, Germany, UK, uh, Costa Rica, Canada, Japan will will come to see my festival. It's amazing. It's simply amazing. I agree. And uh, it's going to be a huge international event. Uh, last year's... Um festival was great we had people from i think it was just the musicians alone from 17 countries or 13 countries something like that a little bit less but you know you know it was from actually last year we had people from very unusual places like like uh tuva tuva republic which is kind of semi-independent uh, country part of uh, russia in north of mongolia mm -hmm. we had a bass player who is from the deep of the siberia who you know with all these kind of uh, COVID things, you know, they travel like, you know, with very weird connection, changing three or four flights, you know, to, you know, it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, in the, and it, it, it's, it, you know, the only uh, bad, sort of bad things for Yaitse was that uh, it's not very well connected. <laughs> you know, the the closest airport in Banyaluka is not very well connected. And then Sarajevo is like two, three, three and a half hours, like, you know, and, uh, and just to reach there, like you need one hour, one day, one and a half day. Right. Madrid is very well connected mm -hmm. and uh, much better infrastructure. But I'm actually very happy and very satisfied what happened last year because with virtually no money and a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of friendship. And uh, we put uh, a beautiful event. Uh, not so many people attended because, but it doesn't matter. You know, it was beautiful. Absolutely. This year will be much different. Yeah. So to wrap it up, um, you can get tickets. They're very affordable um, on the moonjuntoledo.com website. Yeah. You, yeah. On that website, you can go to, uh, uh, then you can access Eventbrite, which is mm -hmm. a, a ticket that I'm selling internationally. And also tickets can be sold at uh, Circulo de Arte at, uh, you know, box office. That's for local people that, you know, they don't use credit cards and, they're not very kind of into buying tickets on America website, but you know everything is on moonjuntoledo.com where you can access uh, the uh, event bride for three days. And uh, I I used to sell tickets for like package for three days, but then because of uh, you know to facilitate, see like these kind of tickets are uh, very affordable for uh, for us uh, that are coming from USA, but they're uh, relatively expensive. For local people and then i had to kind of break into individual days and people are uh, buying you know like i think first day will be sold out second day we will try to sell out third day you know it's see this is thing like people are very you know Toledo, like if they don't know the bands they are kind of they are not very kind of risking to see like you know and then, uh, who knows maybe we have some tv and radio promotion maybe we can promise but we'll invite a lot of people to come like you know complimentary tickets and we you know we would like to fill out the room and our attention is, yeah, we would like to sell more tickets, but our intention are different. Our intention right. is to make a very great festival, to have something to show, to uh, to do festivals next year in much bigger venues for uh, uh, that are subsidized because this year we started late, we couldn't get any subsidies. Everything is kind of privately invested, you know, like my private investment, but it's my investment in the future. And I, I if we do well this this thing, we are in pole position for the next year right so um for under a hundred bucks you can see nine ten bands you can see people who are legends in the music industry you can hear some discussions that'll enlighten and uh broaden your both philosophical and uh artistic uh, horizons and i think it's a really amazing uh event so i'm can, hoping that we see can, a lot of people yeah. there and you can see like a beautiful visit beautiful town and you can hang out with very interesting people yep. you know like like you know guy from costa rica meets guy from uh, indonesia and guy from israel and guy from japan and guy from norway it's, it's 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 a great you know this is actually my world 
when people from everywhere in the world can go in one place to enjoy life. And this is really kind of, uh, let's enjoy life. You know, life is only one, you know, let's, let's have uh, good things rather than thinking about bad things that are happening in the world. All right. Excellent. So we'll see people there in Toledo, Spain, which is about a 30 to 40 minute train ride south of Madrid. And, yeah, uh, and if you know, if you're watching this video, let us know if you're going and uh, it'd be great tickets to meet you. Tickets are very cheap if you're coming from Europe. Tickets are uh, very cheap and also accommodation here are relatively cheap. And if you're coming from USA, I saw prices lately, you know, they're not that affordable. If you can, you know, what you can do, you can come here for three, four days, see festival, then you can visit Spain. You know, it's very That's affordable. Right. All right. Thanks, Leonardo. Thank you very much for having me. Yep.